This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Look, it's the age of creation. Everyone is out there making stuff. Websites, online stores, YouTube channels, podcasts, blogs. Did I say websites already? People are out there making a lot of stuff. It's obvious, like you've probably got a great idea yourself, you know someone who does, something like that, and when you're ready to take that project from your head to the screen in front of you, that's where Squarespace comes in. It's the perfect web tool to help you fashion the internet into whatever you want it to be. Maybe the kind of hands-on type, lots of opinions and ideas about what exactly your website should look like. If so, very cool. Squarespace gives you all of the customization options you could ever want, with no updates, no patches, no technical nonsense to worry about. Or maybe you just need something functional, something that works with minimal thought so you can stay focused on the content and not the coat of paint. Well, just use one of their quick, beautiful templates to make a website that's both fresh and simple. And once you're done setting up your website, logging in the name, maybe playing with some of the colors, there are so many extra features that Squarespace provides so that your website can thrive. Email campaigns, patronage portals, social integrations, member-only areas, analytics, commercial options, 24 7 customer support. Deep breath. Everything you want is in one place. So when you're ready to get started on the next project of yours, big or small, if it involves a website, it's got to be with Squarespace. Right now, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your new site, go to squarespace.com forward slash brain food, and you'll save 10% of your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now today's video. It's a scene which has played out in countless spy thrillers. An assassin slinks stealthily through the shadows, silently stalking his target. At the perfect moment, he pulls out his pistol, a long cylindrical silencer fitted to his muzzle. The target, completely unaware of his presence, the assassin raises his weapon, takes aim, and fires a single shot. But instead of a loud bang, the weapon only makes a dull thump or a hiss, scarcely recognizable as a gunshot. The target drops dead, and as bystanders look about in confusion for the source of the fatal shot, the assassin melts back into the shadows and slips away. Silencers, or as they are more correctly called, suppressors, are one of Hollywood's favorite plot conveniences, allowing characters to carry firearms in situations where the need for stealth would otherwise preclude their use. But how do these seemingly magical devices actually work, and can they really render a firearm completely silent, or is it all just a bunch of Hollywood hokum? The noise produced by a firearm varies wildly depending on the type and ammunition, ranging from around 140 decibels for a 22 caliber rimfire rifle to 172 decibels for a 50 caliber machine gun. The US Occupational Health and Safety Authority, or OSHA, defines 140 decibels as the threshold for pain and immediate hearing loss, and 85 decibels as the threshold for hearing loss after prolonged exposure, meaning that using any firearm for an extended period without ear protection will result in permanent hearing loss. The sound of a gunshot comes from three different sources. The first being the movement of components within the firearm's mechanism or action such as the hammer, firing pin, bolt, or slide. The second source of noise is the bullet breaking the sound barrier as it exits the barrel, creating a tiny sonic boom. This is also the source of the bullwhip's distinctive crack. But the most significant source of noise is the sudden expansion of hot propellant gas as it exits the barrel behind the bullet, and it is this effect which suppressors seek to mitigate. The first modern fire firearm suppressor was invented in 1902 by Hiram Percy Maxim, son of Sir Hiram Stevens Maxim, inventor of the first practical machine gun. Maxim, an avid hunter and target shooter, sought a means of indulging in his hobby without bothering his neighbors with noise. In 1908, he forms the Maxim Silent Firearms Company to produce suppressors for both military and civilian clients. The company flourished until 1934, when the National Firearms Act, or NFA, banned the private sale of suppressors in the United States. The Maxim suppressor was a relatively simple device consisting of a short tube fitted to the muzzle of a firearm containing a set of regularly spaced spiral metal baffles. Each baffle in turn featured a central hole forming a cylindrical channel down which the bullet could travel. According to a later Maxim Company brochure, the device worked as followed. The propelling gases are made to whirl around inside the silencer. This whirling forces the gas to fly out from the center by centrifugal force, leaving a central space. Just the same as when water is whirled around a set bowl, a hole or space forms at the center. This leaves the space for the bullet to make its passage. The gas cannot press through the space until it slows down. This causes it to discharge 
crashed into the atmosphere gradually. This absolutely prevents noise and also reduces recoil over two thirds. Modern suppressors work more or less on the same principle, though nearly all have abandoned Maxim spiral baffles for straight ones as the former are more expensive in manufacture and prone to overheating. By slowing down and cooling the propellant gases and allowing them to dissipate over a longer period of time, suppressors mitigate the sudden expansion responsible for much of a gunshot's noise. Many suppressors also incorporate a hollow expansion chamber at the rear, which allows the propellant gases to expand and decelerate before reaching the baffles, increasing their effectiveness. Efficiency can further be enhanced by filling the suppressor with water or grease, which serves to quickly cool down and reduce the pressure of the propellant gases. However, this liquid quickly evaporates and must be topped up after a certain number of shots. The similar technique is to pack the expansion chamber with metal mesh or other porous conductive material. Like the water or grease, this acts as a heat sink to cool down the propellant gases, but lasts significantly longer and requires less maintenance. While most suppressors use Maxim style metal baffles, a few models use rubber versions known as wipes without pre cut central holes. Instead, the bullet must first punch through the wipes, which then seal up behind it, trapping the propellant gases in the suppressor. Wipes also serve the secondary function of slowing down the bullet for reasons that we will soon cover. This system can make a suppressor extremely efficient, but its effectiveness degrades significantly after only a handful of shots as the wipes become increasingly worn out, requiring them to be frequently replaced. For this reason, wipe-based suppressors are largely relegated to firearms intended for infrequent use, such as special forces or pilots shot down behind enemy lines. Yet another principle employed by certain suppressors is destructive interference or noise cancellation. This involves the use of a hollow chamber at the end of the suppressor, precisely sized so that any residual sound waves exiting the barrels are reflected back in and cancel themselves out. This is the same mechanism used by ordinary automotive mufflers. Indeed, Hiram Percy Max invented the muffler concurrently with the silencer, with mufflers becoming the Maxim company's main source of revenue after suppressors were banned in 1934. Newer, more advanced silencers make use of a technique called frequency shifting, whereby propellant gases are vented through specially sized holes to shift the frequency of the noise beyond the range of human hearing, similar to the principle in a dog whistle. But while advanced suppressors can eliminate much of the noise generated by the expansion of propellant gases, as previously mentioned, this is not the only source of noise in a firearm. Thus, a firearm fitted with the world's best suppressor will still generate significant noise in the form of the bullet's sonic boom and the cycling of the action. The latter problem is more easily managed in manually operated firearms like bolt-action rifles as the shooter can wait until they have retreated out of enemy earshot before cycling the action. The Delisle carbine used by British commandos during World War II even featured rubber pads to muffle the sound of the bolt being opened and closed. Mechanical noise is harder to avoid in self-loading firearms, so in many cases such weapons are operated in single-shot mode only. For example, the Knight's Armaments XM9, a suppressed M9 Beretta pistol issued to US Air Force crews for self-defense behind enemy lines, features a special lever to lock the slide closed, preventing it from cycling and producing noise when fired. This means the pistol must be manually re cocked after each shot, but given the dire circumstances under which the weapon is meant to be used, this is considered as an acceptable trade-off. The sonic boom produced by the bullet is comparatively easier to deal with. While certain cartridges like 45 ACP are naturally subsonic, most ammunition must be slowed down for use in suppressed firearms. This is accomplished in a variety of ways, the simplest being to reduce the propellant powder load in the cartridge itself. Another technique, as previously mentioned, is to fit the suppressor with solid rubber wipes. The friction generated by punching through these wipes slows down the bullet such that by the time it emerges from the suppressor, it's traveling at subsonic speeds. However, in addition to quickly wearing out, wipes also significantly degrade the accuracy of the bullet, meaning wipe-based suppressors are no longer widely used. The third way of slowing down the bullet is to drill holes in the barrel to bleed off propellant gas, preventing the bullet from attaining supersonic velocity. This method has the advantage of allowing the use of regular supersonic ammunition without the loss of accuracy accuracy associated with white brace suppressors. However, all three of these techniques are only applicable to pistol caliber cartridges like 9mm parabellums. Larger rifle cartridges are too powerful to be effectively slowed down by wipes or gas venting and become unstable and inaccurate at subsonic speeds. Thus, no matter how sophisticated a suppressor they are fitted with, most rifles will produce an unavoidably loud supersonic crack. Suppressors can either be detachable, screwing or latching onto the end of the barrel, or integrated into the firearm itself. For an integral suppressor to work, part of the barrel must be ported or drilled with holes to allow propellant 
gas to vent out, otherwise the gas would bypass the silencer entirely, rendering the whole device pointless. Integrally suppressed firearms tend to be quieter than those with detachable suppressors due to the greater care taken in integrating the firearm's ballistics with the suppressor's design. However, a well-designed detachable suppressor can be just as effective, and examples have been produced for nearly every type of firearm, even shotguns. So yes, that scene from No Country for Old Men, where Mexican hitman Anton Chegas uses a suppressed shotgun, is technically accurate. But while silencers have been developed for machine guns and submachine guns, they are of relatively limited use in this role. This is because the rapid rate of fire does not give the propellant gas sufficient time to vent from the suppressor, causing a buildup of pressure that severely reduces sound suppression. Sustained automatic fire can also overheat and damage the baffles, quickly destroying the suppressor. For this reason, suppressed machine guns are typically fired in semi-automatic mode or, at worst, in short bursts. One type of firearm that cannot be easily suppressed despite Hollywood's frequent claims is the revolver. This is because the vast majority of revolvers feature a large gap between the front of the cylinder and the rest of the barrel. Much of the sound produced by a revolver comes from propellant gas leaking through the cylinder gap, which a suppressor cannot mitigate. There is, however, one major exception to this rule. The Russian M1895 Nagin revolver features a mechanism that pushes the cylinder forward against the rear of the barrel just before the hammer drops and fires an unusual 7.62 by 38 mm cartridge whose bullet is seated deep in the brass case. This allows a tight seal to form between the cylinder and the barrel, preventing gas from leaking out and allowing the Nagent to be suppressed. Indeed, for several decades, suppressed Nagent revolvers were used by Soviet NKVD secret police and later Vietnamese Viet Cong guerrillas to carry out covert assassinations. But Simon, you're probably thinking right now, all of this so very interesting, but do silencers actually make firearms silent? Alas, once again, Hollywood has been lying to you, for in real life, no suppressor is capable of completely silencing the sound of a gunshot. For example, even the best commercial suppressors can only reduce the noise of a 22 caliber rifle from 140 to 111 decibels, a 9mm handgun from 162 to 126 decibels, and a 5.56 caliber AR-15 rifle from 165 decibels to 132. This is, as you may have noticed, still extremely loud, a far cry from the barely audible thump or hiss commonly depicted in films and TV shows. Of what use, then, are suppressors? While suppressors can't fully silence firearms, they can still significantly reduce their noise profile, making gunshots less recognizable and, as such, harder to locate by enemy forces. By trapping, cooling, and diffusing the propelling gases that emerge from the barrel, suppressors can also eliminate muzzle flash and reduce felt recoil up to 30%, making a firearm even stealthier and easy to handle. Finally, in a civilian context, suppressors can allow firearms to be used in enclosed spaces without deafening the user or bystanders, reducing or eliminating the need to wear hearing protection while shooting, and limit the distance over which gunshots can be heard. Indeed, in many European countries, including the UK and Finland, civilian hunters and target shooters are encouraged to use suppressors in order to reduce noise pollution. Strangely, mainstream acceptance of suppressors is not carried over across the pond, despite the significantly laxer gun laws in North America compared to Europe. This is largely due to the popular perception of suppressors being the tool of assassins, criminals, and other nefarious characters, a perception reinforced by countless books, films, and TV shows. Suppressors are prohibited outright in nine US states and in Canada, and are obtainable everywhere else only via a complicated and expensive application process through the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Since 2011, the National Rifle Association and the National Suppressor Association have run concerted campaigns aimed at debunking common myths regarding suppressors and promoting their use for reducing noise pollution around outdoor ranges and hearing loss among sport shooters and bystanders. So far, however, these campaigns have done little to change the ATF's stance on the issue. While the best modern suppressors are only capable of lowering the sound of a gunshot at just below the 140 decibel threshold for immediate hearing loss, a handful of historical firearms have come very close to attaining Hollywood quiet levels of suppression. The most famous example is the previously mentioned Alar Carbine, an integrally suppressed 45 caliber bolt-action rifle used by British commandos during the Second World War. In official testing, the sound of a Dalal firing registered 
registered at 85.5 decibels, while the Well Rod, an integrally suppressed 32 caliber pistol developed for British Special Operations Executive or SOE, registered as low as 73 decibels. However, 1940s sound measuring equipment was not as sophisticated as today, and modern testing has pegged these numbers as closer to 110 and 122 decibels, respectively. Similarly, the suppressed version of the Sten submachine gun, also used by British commandos, registers at around 127 decibels. While these noise levels are, according to OSHA, equivalent to a loud nightclub or construction site, in practice these weapons were almost unrecognizable at even close ranges. For example, another ultra quiet firearm from the period was the High Standard HDM, a 22 caliber integrally suppressed pistol developed for the Office of Strategic Services, or OSS, the precursor to the CIA. The effectiveness of this weapon was dramatically demonstrated by OSS head William Donovan during a meeting with U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt at the White House. While White House was busy dictating a letter, Donovan turned his back and emptied an HDM pistol into a sandbag. He then turned around and announced to the astonished president that he was finished with his demonstration. Despite the pistol registering at 120 decibels, Roosevelt reportedly hadn't realized that a firearm was being discharged. The quietest firearms on record, however, are the MSP, SP4M, OTS-38, and PSS pistols developed by the Soviet Union and later the Russian Federation for use by KGB and FSB operatives. Instead of being suppressed themselves, these weapons are designed to use specially integrated silenced ammunition, specifically the 7.62 by 42 mm SP4 cartridge. This cartridge features a sliding piston ahead of the propellant powder charge, which upon firing is propelled forward and strikes the base of the bullet, pushing it down the barrel. The piston then stops and seals off the end of the cartridge, preventing propellant gas from escaping and completely eliminating noise, muzzle flash, and smoke. In official testing, these pistols registered at only 110 decibels with nearly all this noise coming from the firing mechanism. This stealth, however, comes at the cost of muzzle velocity, with the Russian silenced pistols having an effective range of only 25 meters. A similar weapon, called the Quiet Special Purpose Revolver, or QSPR, was developed by the U.S. Army for use in Viet Cong tunnels during the Vietnam War, while the captive piston suppression concept has even been applied to artillery in the form of the Belgian Fly K Spigot Mortar. Unlike in conventional mortars where the bomb is dropped down and fired from a tubular barrel, the Fly K bomb features a hollow tail boom containing a propellant charge and a captive piston which slides over a cylindrical launch rod or spigot. As in the SP4 cartridge, upon firing, the piston is propelled down the length of the tail boom, launching the bomb off the spigot. It then halts at the end of its travel, sealing off the boom and eliminating all noise and flash. Yet despite their numerous advantages, outside of special operations, applications, suppressors have not been widely adopted by regular military forces. At first glance, this might seem strange for what army wouldn't want its troops to be stealthier. However, there is a sound psychological reason for militaries issuing suppressors. The doctrine of suppressing fire. On the battlefield, small arms fire is often used not to directly engage the enemy, but rather to keep their heads down so friendly forces can safely advance. In these situations, the louder the gunshot, the better. Suppressed firearms simply don't possess the same intimidation factor. In conclusion, suppressors are not the magical, uber-sneaky devices Hollywood would have us believe, capable of muffling gunshots to the level of a whisper. Nevertheless, they do have a wide range of applications, from disguising the nature and origin of gunshots to reducing hearing loss and noise pollution. Thus, in spite of their less-than-savory reputation, suppressors remain a useful part of any civilian or military shooter's toolkit. And before you ask, no, neither an empty pop bottle or a pillow will work as an effective improvised suppressor. That, too, is pure Hollywood. And if you were court trying to improvise a suppressor without a permit, you will likely find yourself being told that you have the right to remain silent. So I really hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.